Hello, my lovely audience. Welcome to Time with Auntie Midwife with your beloved midwife, Kenneth. I am glad that we've met again to continue our discussion on the male reproductive system. I miss you all, and I know you miss me too. But guess what? <laughs> I am here. You are the reason why I am here. During our previous episode, we drew the curtains on the external organs of the male reproductive system. And so today, we are moving straight into the internal organs that make up the male reproductive system. I'm sad that we are gradually getting to the end of this interesting discussion. But I'm as well happy because you guys are learning, you are promoting your health, and that is all that matters. I know you bear with me. To be part of this interesting and beautiful family where we learn together have fun promote our health and vibe yes vibe vibe you already know the ritual if you do not know the ritual well this is the ritual kindly subscribe to the channel like the videos share comment and tap on the notification bell to get yourself updated once the videos are being uploaded thank you so much the cards on the videos too please click on them as well i love you Mwah. back to the topic for discussion the internal organs that make up the male reproductive system today we shall start with the seminal vesicles and duct and the ejaculatory duct in our next episode we shall consider the others thank you the seminal vesicles and duct if you hear vesicles before we move into details if you hear vesicles it means that whatever we are talking about is in the form of a sac and vesicles also produce a fluid okay so seminal vesicles in its simplest form it is in the form of a sac and it produces a fluid so when we move into details and i mean anatomically you shall know what it is and the fluid it produces hope you feel me I feel you too. <laughs> Some now vesicles, they are a pair of simple tubular glands. They are irregularly shaped sacs about 5 cm long lying in between the base of the bladder and I mean the base, the posterior aspect of the bladder and the rectum. Their function is to secrete a thick yellowish colored fluid which is added to the sperm to form the seminal fluid. In a nutshell, the secretion ultimately becomes semen, okay? And it is very rich. It is rich because it contains glucose and other substances. And these substances, they nourish the sperm, they keep the sperm alive, and they keep the sperm mortal as well. That is why you also need to eat nutritious diet, okay? So that you get all the nutrients you need in order to keep you alive and to promote your health. That is the most important thing. So that is what the semen does. Each vesicle opens into a seminal duct which joins the vas deferens on the other corresponding side to form the ejaculatory duct. And so when these seminal vesicles, when they open, into the seminal duct you had a duct it means that it's in the form of a tube and this tube will also join the vas deferens on the other side to make it form another duct another tube called the ejaculatory duct one will ask what is the difference between sperms and semen that is a great question they are usually used interchangeably and that becomes an error why because the sperms is the microscopic structure while semen is a macroscopic structure and also the sperm is the haploid male reproductive cell so you can see it with your eye haploid male reproductive cell whilst the semen is the fluid that carries the sperms and so when an um, when a male ejaculates or when there is an ejaculation what comes out of the male is the semen and the semen has the sperm in it so you see you've been using it in the wrong way if you ejaculate what comes out is the semen 
and the semen contains the sperm. And so when the semen is being ejaculated into a female, it is the sperm that will swim to fertilize the egg or the ovary. I'm happy you get it now. Mwah, thanks for learning. <laughs> now to the ejaculatory duct. As I said earlier, when the seminal duct and the vas deferens they form, they join, they form the ejaculatory duct. And so the ejaculatory duct also is about 2.5 cm long, and it passes through the prostate gland and join the urethra. Yes, prostate gland. And prostate gland is another internal organ of the male reproductive system. So in effect, they connect the vas deferentia and the urethra. Remember, when the testis produces the spermatozoa, already it will pass through this vas deferens to the urethra. But before it gets there, it will as well pass through the ejaculatory that and it finally gets into the urethra and we see the semen coming out. This is it as simple as that and so it is very important not to relate issues concerning um, abnormalities with reproduction to only the penis as i already said in the introduction it can be the ejaculatory duct that is affected it can be the epididymis the testes any other organ we have already discussed and so when you find out that there is any abnormality from normal the best thing to do is to rush to the nearby health facility for examination and for treatment then you will be okay in order to promote your health this is where we will end today's lesson thank you very much for the valuable time and thank you for subscribing to my channel there is more for you each week kindly stay tuned i love you so much remember it's your life it's your choice you need to promote your health i love you all we shall meet again bye